Good evening. The government today approved 13 power projects entailing investments worth around 33,000 crore, which were pending approvals due to various reasons. 25 oil and gas blocks with investment commitment of about $7 billion also got approval during the same meeting. Now, these 13 new power projects are among the 20 that the Cabinet Committee on Investment, or CCI, was reviewing. These include 10 transmission projects, one hydroelectric project, and two thermal projects as well. The 10 projects from transmission sector were awaiting nods and clearances from the Ministry of Environment and Forest for stage 1 and stage 2 forest clearances. Three projects from hydroelectric sector and seven thermal projects were awaiting clearances from other ministries as well. The Cabinet Committee on Investment held, has uh, been set up to review and clear big infra projects worth 1,000 crore and more and this decision seems to be part of the big infra push that the government has been talking about for a while now. Tonight on The Big Picture, however, we will concentrate only on the power sector. Even though these proposals have been cleared, a question mark remains on the viability of these new projects. And at the cost of sounding pessimistic, we will raise some more questions pertaining not just to these 13 power projects, but the sentiment in the power sector as a whole. The issues in the power sector are well known and are not new. We've spoken about on this very program, about the state electricity board reforms, about shortage of coal and gas, about flawed bidding frameworks, what have you. We will try and gauge whether these new cleared projects uh, will perhaps do their bit in, let's just put, uh, let's just say, put a new current of electricity in an otherwise flogging sector. With me tonight, two people with an extensive knowledge of the sector, and both of them have written prolifically on the issue concerning the sector. Shoma Banerjee, a national policy editor of the Economic Times, and Priyaranjan Dash, managing editor of the Financial Chronicle, will join me on the program. Joining us on the phone line will be Mr. Anil Razdan, former secretary. Ministry of Power. Many thanks to all of you. Let's get started right away. I'd like to start uh, with Shoma Banerjee, if I could. First up, Shoma, the CCI decision. 13 power projects cleared by the CCI, 10 of them transmission, 2 thermal, 1 hydro. The sector will, will no doubt welcome this. Do you think uh, it will also affect sentiment? Uh, do you think it's likely to be, like I said in my intro, perhaps slightly more electric in the sector now? Yeah, I think it will. Um, See, I, I don't think we should see this decision in isolation because it's come in the amidst a lot of other decisions in the recent past. Mm. Uh, and I'd like to you know, widen the discussion to that because that would give you the comprehensive picture of why this could actually lead to the electrifying effect which you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> right. So one is, you know, always it helps when pending projects for <laughs> for things like environment and forest, which are important, but they have to be given in time, or at least said it won't happen, come through. And that's exactly what the CCI was set up for. But I think more important than this, and which you rightly said, is the fuel problem, which has actually plagued this sector for far too long. And the recent decisions taken by uh, the CERC with regard to the ultra-mega projects, both in the case of Adani, which is not an ultra-mega project, and the Tata project, as well as yesterday night's decision on the pooling of coal prices that it's not going to be pooling anymore. I think they are big Phillips because they give you this, the indicator of how prices are going to move forward. You're talking for the first time of real prices being passed through, which was supposed to be initially the policy, but we deferred on it. We did not throw the line on it. First time, I think the government is talking of the fact that fuel prices will have to be passed through and therefore to get fuel if you don't have it domestically you have to import it and you have to pay a price bad news for consumers because you will start paying the right prices good news for the industry and very good news for investors as well as banks remember we, who are lending large i want to talk about uh, the the passing on of the price to the consumer but that in a little later in the program i want to come to mr dash right now do you agree with soma uh, obviously it's a it's a fillip for the sector right now absolutely uh, but, but yes. yeah your comment. more so because of the 13 as you mentioned 10 are transmission projects and, uh, you know, it's, it's not just the generating projects which are important, but the transmission projects are important because unless you have evacuation of power, mm. then uh, there is, you know, the generation projects too would sure. get delayed. And these 10 projects, since they are transmission projects, they are not really, uh, you know, uh, the, their fuel linkage is not an issue there. Mm -hmm. Issue there has been forest clearance, right. basically. Mm. And uh, you see, uh, f as, as such, Transmission projects are not uh, that environmentally disruptive as uh, some of the other projects, for instance, the mining projects. Mm. Coal mining projects, for instance, could be... Far more detrimental. Uh, yes, yeah. far more detrimental. Yeah. And uh, so it's a, it's a happy augury that uh, you have had these train transmission projects cleared. Mm. And, uh, uh, and, you know, of the generation projects, however, 
There's just two of them, thermal projects which have been cleared mm. and a hydro project. One hydro project, yeah. So uh, there are still, there are a lot of issues and we know that a uh, lot of projects, this is, this is going to f uh, now free up investment of some 30,000 crore right, rupees, right, right. These, these projects. But uh, there are several other projects which are in the pipeline. Mm. And, uh, Seven where, with the CCI where, itself, right? Where now. fuel is a major issue. Mm. And as you were mentioning, some of the projects which have had uh, financial closure uh, but haven't been able to take off, they are right. taking the financial system also along with them down the and, and down that's the that's a big loophole so there if in, in projects the sense of black keep, hole uh, yeah if projects keep uh, moving then of course that's good news sure i want to go uh, to mr anand razdan who's joined us on the phone uh, many thanks sir for joining us uh, your comments and your thoughts first thoughts on these power projects being cleared 13 of them have have, we, have been cleared by the cci uh, out of them 10 are transmission two are uh, thermal and one is a hydroelectric project uh, big news for the industry uh, do you think sentiment will improve I think it's good news. I'd say not very big news, but good news, a step in the right direction. Government has given it the due importance that it needed and the sense of urgency. I think you see the whole government apparatus has to move as one. It's not uh, uh, infrastructure projects are not projects of one particular ministry or particular investors. They have an overall effect on the economy, on industry, on people's lives, 24 by 7 availability of power, investors from abroad wanting to come. They want an assurance that, you know, somebody is there to take care. We are putting our money, uh, but the government is serious about getting us clearances. I mean, why investment in some states moves faster or it's a welcome destination as compared to other states? Because there's a feeling that the chief executive there or the government there is there to sort out all the coordination problems and give you a go-ahead. Mm. That, look here, we are solidly behind you. Come, set up your project here. We'll get you through. Similarly, if you want foreign direct investment to come to India, I think a very good, clear message goes out from the government of India that, yes, without compromising the essentials of uh, environment or forests, mm. Yes, the government of India at the highest level is behind you to see that we do this hand-holding to see you through. Right. And the other thing is, you see, the longer that you delay these projects, keep them in the pipeline, keep them pending like a file in the government or squabbling with each other that my sector is more important mm -hmm. than yours, the project cost keeps going up. Mm. And ultimately, these projects could even turn unviable. Right. Or, you see, this is very good that some transmission projects have been cleared, because otherwise you'll have bottled up power. Mm. And you've got to take some bold decisions. Right. But now, of course, the regulators will have to endorse particularly uh, some, you know, you were talking of the fuel issue earlier mm. uh, in your commentary. But we are not really concerned with that today. But this Vishnu Guard People Koti project, as far as I remember... Mm. When I was past secretary, this was a project which was uh, under, uh, undergoing these evaluations and the uh, clearances of investment had come almost six years ago. Right. So you see, it's almost a gap of five, six years. I know. I, I think, you know, when we are asking for such good and proper environment or forest clearances, we've got to create a base of people there, experts, who can give you the proper reports and not desktop reports, reports which will carry... Uh, conviction with that. I, I think, I think, Mr. Razan, last time you were on the show, we talked about this as well, then, uh, that we need yes. a cadre who Precisely. knows what's happening on the ground as well, and that's what we really need to get the info we need. Yes. Uh, I, I want to take one point from what you just said and take it to Shoma. He's, he talked about investors and this kind of signal that goes out to foreign investors, big FDI players, uh, who will want to invest now because say, they'll think that the government is completely behind big infra projects now. You talked about investor sentiment as well. A bit more on that, uh, Shoma. How is that going to affect? You know, I I, I would love to agree with uh, Mr. Razdan from whom I have learnt a lot. But I think in the play of project implementation, there's a big role of state governments. Mm. And unfortunately, although the centre is looking like it's getting its act together when it comes to squabbling ministries, it's not that the ministries are not differing as yet. Remember, yesterday's night, the power and the coal ministries didn't see Still together. Heads, yeah. Environment has always been uh, saying that there are no projects waiting, whereas now you see a whole lot of projects which are getting cleared. Mm. But you know, ultimately, this, this this echo this has to be echoed at the state level as well so 
yes, you got the clearances now at the central level. The project has to now come up in the state level. Mm. And some projects, particularly hydro projects, it will mean rehabilitation and, and, more, and all of that. So the state, the center has to also fall in line same way mm. for the investors to really get the message that India is happening. India is happening maybe at the center, maybe in some ministry, but not as a whole story. Right. And you could make that out whenever you see the finance minister traveling or the prime minister traveling. Mm. Investors are worried about what is happening to India's federal structure because Absolutely. what the center stays mm. is not really being echoed by the state and right. that's where the projects have to come up. We'll take a small break right now. Before the break, uh, Mr. Dash, uh, the, the problem uh, between the center and the states and, and in coordination and they're still at loggerheads in most cases. That's a big problem right now? Yes, of course. I means it's the project clearance which is a big problem. Mm. So, like last time we discussed, uh, see, the, a better idea would be that you create a shelf of projects, mm. of all cleared projects, and then offer that for investors to come and invest. Which they did in rather the than, case, I mean, that yes, was the whole idea. And rather than uh, <clears throat> the money, whether it is the investors' money or financial institutions' money, sure. being committed first, to the projects and then the clearance taking uh, five years, six years mm. and sometime not happening at all. Mm. As a like result, the one Mr. Rajan just mentioned. Yes, yes, yes. what so Mr. Rajan was saying. So I, mean. I think a better idea is that. But even in the case of so-called uh, pre-cleared projects, we've had problem yeah. because there has also, there has been delay in uh, clearances. Mm. You know, this import, uh, coal import problem, you know, the cost of uh, coal uh, having gone up significant, significantly. Mm. This has come about because those projects were delayed, exactly. you know. Mm. Had they happened at the, at the time, they wouldn't have looked as unviable as they are looking today. Right, right. Fair point. So we'll take that uh, point and we'll take a break uh, immediately after that point. We'll come back. Lots more to talk about on The Big Picture. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Welcome back to The Big Picture. We're discussing the 13 power projects cleared by the CCI today in that meeting. Some oil and gas blocks also explored, but we'll save that for you at another show. Uh, I want to go to Mr. Razan again. Mr. Razan, I have some figures with me right now. Uh, power generation in the country uh, has increased only 1.71% in the March quarter, which is this year, uh, compared with a year ago. Now, according to, this is according uh, from the data from the Central Electricity Authority, or CEA. This, apparently, is the worst performance in the last eight quarters, despite capacity increasing 10% from a year ago. Now, not keeping the problems of distribution, uh, tariff collection and capacity in India in mind, uh, in your opinion, do you think the next five years or however long it takes for these particular projects to start generating electricity, uh, even after that, the generation capacity, you think that will be increased uh, due to these pro projects and help us reach, reach our potential, which is far higher? You see, uh, it's not that uh, it's only fuel that is an issue. It is also the health of the distribution companies, whether they can afford to get that uh, fuel and um, uh, generate power and be able to sell it without losing money on it. So you see, tariffs have to keep pace appropriately. at &C losses have to come down drastically. Mm. I mean, there are a lot of well-meaning um, public leaders who come and say, you know, voice of the people that we do not want uh, tariffs to go up but i think an equally strong voice could come from within the public that we shall not tolerate our own brethren stealing power or right. whoever is caught stealing power we should stand exposed and and you know castigated or ostracized by society it mm. helps i think you know in some states in india we've seen that particularly in the southern states that sentiment is strong you don't right. want to be seen stealing power or losing out or not paying your bills but some other states are notorious, on the other hand. Mm. So the other point is that you see gas availability, unfortunately, has come down very drastically. And the PLF has fallen down. Plus, you see, if you're going to increase the cost of gas or cost of fuel, mm. which I think fuel is a natural advantage of a country, it gives it the competitive edge. Um, I have a view on it. You know, you can't be equating your fuel costs to international costs. After all, your wages are not international. Your incomes are not international. We've got to see what we can afford, what we can afford with our own wages, with our own, uh, you know, fuel costs, etc. That will be our competitive edge or advantage as far as industry is concerned or consumer availability. Tariffs, of course, have to be appropriate. You can't put in subsidies all the time. Don't put in subsidy. Hmm. I say even for fuel, no case for subsidy, the actual cost, but it helps, if it helps people who have so far been deprived of right. growth, Mr. Razan, 
it should get them yeah. but the other point that you are making that why it is only you see 1% as compared to 10% mm. uh, capacity addition right i think uh, you know i had a very clear vision uh, when i was in the job that uh, i wanted india to reach a capability of setting up 100,000 uh, megawatts in 5 years in one plan mm, mm. 80 to 100,000 so that's why we put it about 80,000 that time right because if china could do 100,000 in one year i said surely you can do 100,000 in 5 years mm. which means that you add about 20,000 megawatts each year by setting a target say of 24 25,000 right mr rajdan that's yeah. what we've done so we put the capability we've got the machinery to do it now we've got to ramp up the fuel availability very fast and at the same time give a clear message to the regulators that they've got to set the right tariff right mr rajdan i want to i want to take that point and i want to take another point and take it take it to mr dash over here uh, the power sector sir is very critical to the economy we all agree on that not just to the economy but the country as a whole many many industries rely heavily on power um, we also know the problems facing the sector this step this particular step of clearing 13 projects is no doubt a positive step a step in the right direction but would you agree with some commentators and some power sector watchers if i could call them that uh, they recommend a complete overhaul of the sector sort of uh, press the reset button uh, reboot the whole sector what they are saying is get coal imported implement a pooled price for coal and you know uh, amend all power purchase agreements Do you think that's a bit radical at this stage? No, no, I I don't agree with uh, pooling of uh, mm. coal prices mm. because of the simple reason that uh, of all the fossil fuels uh, reserves or capacity or, or resources that we have, we have coal. At one time, we believed that coal will last us 300 years. That's mm. not the case, mm. but. uh we we still are the third largest producer of coal and we have a, a reserve which we have not been able to uh, exploit mm. and we are not producing coal you know annual growth you know coal production has stagnated mm. last year it was 3% this year uh, we are looking at some 600 uh, million tons of coal mm. but our demand will be 770 or so mm. so 165 million tons of coal we have to import this year right. now uh, so in the short term because of the uh, policies that we have pursued with regard to coal production in the past we have an import uh, dependency. dependency and so we have to import in the short run but hmm. we have to find in the medium term we have to find answer in terms of raising the coal production hmm. now there of course it has got to do with the nationalization of coal mining that has happened and uh, we and we have moved from uh, you know policy to policy and today we have had a parliamentary committee also coming up in addition to the earlier csg report and all that pointing out the kind of uh, mess that we have been in mm -hmm. and unless we correct that and drastically what if anything radical that needs to be done i think it needs to be done there in so far as the power sector is concerned what mr rajdan mentioned about the financial health of the distribution companies and of the state electricity board now the the debt restructuring uh, program which which has been it's it's time that the states now embrace this debt restructuring program mm. and along with that certain reforms including tariff reforms that are required mm. to be to be undertaken right. and uh, this uh, uh, action against stealing of power and things like that right. that needs to be done so that that is very important but most important is to find an answer to this coal problem that we have right uh, uh, so uh, despite so many problems uh, i read a survey in a business paper today itself and that said that the recent uh, not to increase the electricity tariffs uh, for consumers will restore investor confidence um investor interest in the sector now that means a bigger a bigger burden on the consumers we talked about that earlier as well uh, is that a cost that we sh we will have to pay to save our power sector of pass course. it on to the uh, i mean it's it's a cost you have to pay to save the economy to mm. save the country mm. india has got far too used to free lunches or subsidized lunches which we can ill afford mm. uh, i in, mean in almost every sector in almost it. every sector mm. and and something which you can't pay for anymore i mean why is it that uh, even a farmer is willing to pay even 4 rupees a unit mm. if he gets quality power so it is actually a political hoodwinking and it's more of a political tool that is used by political leaders mm. particularly during elections uh, to you know woo uh, people with mm. free tariffs or or free power or subsidized tariffs etc i think that time is gone mm. the time is to pay the basic utility charges right. that you have to pay for fuel and 
and what I think what uh, Dash mentioned and that's very very important is that the radical changes have to come into the fuel sector. Right, the right. radical changes and I think the power sector has more or less in the last 20 years got its act together, knows the distribution sector is the weak link mm. and they are working on that. But I just want to add one small thing on the SEB restructuring mm -hmm. because that is a big issue. You know, at the end of the day, I feel being a good fellow, actually, you get cheated. Mm. Because, you know, you've been a bad guy, you've not paid up your dues, you've done nothing, and you're going to get this waiver now, and you don't have to pay up those dues. Mm. So until and unless it comes with a rider, like you did for the JNURM case, etc., that you ought to do this, only then you get this waiver, mm. it shouldn't be given. I mean, this is not money doling out just like that. Right, right. And what do I get by being a good SCB who's actually collected tariffs or revised Stop tariffs? Stop the free lunches. Yeah, basically. I mean, Stop you the just, free there's no way but do that. Yeah. Stop the free lunches. We'll take another short break right now. We'll talk a bit more about the coal problem problem that Mr. Radha and my other two uh, guests did mention right now. The coal problem, of course, very, very critical to the power sector. We'll talk about that after the break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the big picture. Mr. Anil Razdan is still with us on the phone line. Uh, sir, India has a power generation capacity of around 223,343, uh, uh, 223, pardon me, megawatts. Of this, 130,000, around 130,000 megawatts is coal-based. Now, along with the problems in the power sector, the shortage of coal is also hampering power generation, and we all agree it is the most critical problem in that particular sector. Pool pricing is out of the window now, if I quote a government official. If not pool pricing, what is the other option? Well, I think, first of all, I may just tell you that uh, the power generating capacity is, in fact, more than that. Right. Because this is grid-connected power. Hmm. Now, they're captive power units also, and I think in the last plan, we did give them coal linkages, and some of them are maybe about twelve to 14,000 megawatts came up in that process. Be that as it may, I think uh, one thing, you see, we have to understand that uh, we've got to ramp up the coal availability substantially. The single digit, etc., growth will not go. We have to look at about 10% or something at least uh, ramping up capacities. Right. But along with that, we will need to take a very serious look at what the railways are able to provide for mm. movement of coal across mm. the country. There is some mines, you see, where coal can move, but the rail uh, availability is not there, the wagon availability. Right. Those tracks have to be cleared. Some of them are coming through the forest areas. Again, they'll have to come through environment forests. Mm. But the same degree of urgency which we have shown here in some of these clearances, I think the CCI will have to clear some of those rail projects very fast right. and put them on very fast track mode because there's no point in mining coal and uh, piling it, it up at those mines. Because even now, you see, we probably have about... 70 million tons ostensibly piled up at the collieries. Right, right. Uh, so all right, this sir. must move. Right, right. So, and here you see, if you've got to ramp up these capacities, you probably have to move out of the old mode of manual uh, shoveling and uh, employing labor. You've got to go into me uh, mechanization and probably go in for MDOs, as I've seen, mine development operators, world-class operators coming through on tenders hmm, hmm. and offering to do the job not at the highest cost, but at the L1. Point taken, sir. Point taken. Yeah. Mr. Dash, uh, you think uh, pool pricing out of the window, uh, good decision? Yes, because I, you see, of the uh, total capacity, thermal ca uh, coal-based capacity that you mentioned, hmm. I think uh, uh, around 65,000 65, megawatts is uh, uh, our capacity which were, which were commissioned before 2009. Mm -hmm. Now there is no logic as to why we should be putting those uh, power plants into this kind of a pool pricing when they have had a settled uh, coal linkage and they were commissioned before 2009. Mm -hmm. So after 2009, if you look at it, there is, there is uh, another class of say 36,000 megawatt, mm. which is which is there, and then then you have another say um, 25,000 to 30,000 megawatt, which are in the process of coming up. Right, right. But but now, you do agree with the fact that the pool pricing option was not see, very. Well. I don't fundamentally. I mm. I think that coal is a domestic fuel, mm, mm, mm. and we have to find. Uh, you know, mine it here and produce it and feed it to our power plants. Fair, fair point, sir. That is, that is, in the short term, if you have to import coal because of the poor policies that you have pursued in the past, hmm. 
you have to bear that cost, additional cost and those power plants which are based on imported coal mm. have to reflect I that in point, the sir. tariff. I take your point. Let's wrap this up, Shoma. Uh, what, is, what is the outlook for the power sector in the near to medium term? Well, in the medium term, it... Not it, much time. Yeah, not much yeah. time. In medium term looks okay, but in the near term, uh, I think... Um, Coal remains the big issue. Biggest issue. The biggest step I see in, in all these decisions is when you say that you're going to pass on actual fuel cost to the tariff. Mm. Because that is what is going to make the difference. Mm. So whether it's imported coal, whether it's domestic coal, imported gas or domestic gas, whatever is the cost of the fuel will mm. be passed on on actual basis to the tariff. Right. As long as that is done, I don't think there's a problem. Absolutely. And if the government can go ahead and do that, if regulators can do that, and most importantly, politicians can do that, then we have a lot of hope. And we won't have secretaries like Mr. Razdan dreaming the same dream all over again. But <laughs> right. things not On that happening. note, I must conclude the show. I must thank. <laughs> no, Adha, I must thank. So I'm out of time, sir. Perhaps Adha, another Adha, show. I'll just, I, I like to just uh, put in one point to what Shoma said, that we need also, you see, the gas sector has let us down very badly. Right, right. We need to ramp up gas production Absolutely. also. Point I think taken, at least has not gone down. Point taken, sir. I have to wrap up now. No more yeah. time, sir. No more time. Thank I must you. thank Anil Razdan as well as Shoma Manaji and Mr. Priyanjan Nash for joining me on the show tonight. Coal remains the critical problem in that sector. Shoma thinks power sector in the last 20 years has perhaps got its act together. But tariffs will be increased and that is something we need. Something we'll have to bear in case we want to save not just the power sector but the economy. Asar Khan saying goodbye, good night, and thank you for watching the big picture. Yeah.